Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Good afternoon from Las Vegas, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's production of HP Discover. We're live here in Las Vegas. This is day two for theCUBE. We've done a number of discovers. Very excited about the keynotes that we saw. Martin Fink talking about the future vision, the machine, new modes of, uh, of computing. HP inventing again. It's, uh, it's actually really exciting, and I'm, I'm quite positive on, uh, on what I've been hearing. So, most positive than I've been for a while, so it's a lot of exciting times here. We're going to talk now about HP software. Uh, Brian Weiss is here, and uh, in the center is Randy Cairns, uh, both with HP software. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Good to thank see you, you again. Great to be here. Yeah, All right, so Randy, you. let me start with you. Give us the high level overview. What's going on with HP software? We got, you got a, a new sheriff in town, right. Robert Young Johns. Right. We've had him on theCUBE before. Passionate guy, great guy. What's going on with HP software? Yeah. So what Robert and actually all of us are talking about this week is, is really how big data changes everything. And really, you know, a lot of focus, I think, over the years on big data has been on, you know, analytics and predictive analytics. But there, really, what we're talking about is how, you know, big data has a profound impact on literally how, you know, businesses kind of function in every, in every way. How they do marketing, how you drive security, um, how you manage your legal and compliance. And so there's a lot of implications and we're working on kind of next generation software that's going to leverage you know, big data to change those, those discrete markets. We just finished our big data survey. I'll share some stats uh -huh. with you. Um, just a couple of very high, highlight uh, films here. About 300 people responded. Only 1%, 1% said big data is a buzzword of unclear meaning. Now if I asked that question of cloud five years ago, <laughs> it would have been right off the charts. That was one. The second one was, have you shifted resources from traditional EDW to new modes of computing like Hadoop? 60% said we have already, another 30% we said we will by the end of the year. So 90% of the base, that was just amazing. It does change everything, right. doesn't it? It absolutely Anything does. about that surprise you? Or? You know, not really. I mean, it, what's interesting is if you, you know, if we talk to customers, say, in our in our backup business, right. um, you know, the data center is under siege. It's getting so much. It's just getting flooded with so much information. Kind of the old models of data protection aren't really working anymore. Um, so we're working on software that can be more predictive um, in understanding, you know, spikes in in compute needs and 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 what you need to do to to make your backup more self-aware to really you know, take it from kind of more of a manual process to something that you can, you can automate and almost, you know, self-heal, um, you know, in process. So Brian, I want to ask you about an autonomy question. So the, the world, you go to Silicon Valley, <laughs> the cloudification, the sassification yeah. of everything. Yeah, yeah. So what about idle on demand? Yeah, so um, look, this is sort of one of the most exciting things that we've launched in the last couple of years. And David, you're very familiar with sort of what autonomy does. So the raw IP is really around understanding meaning inside noisy human information, right? So how do you make sense of a text document? What's it about? What are the concepts in there, right? How do I understand an image, right? Does it contain a face? Does it not? Is it important? So what, what IDLE does is it does that kind of near matching, it does a probability modeling, right? Which is more than just, hey, I know that's a match, but it's actually close, it's close enough. So we do this conceptual understanding of, of human information, and that, that's sort of the core meat and potatoes of what autonomy does over, you know, over the last, 10, 15 years, right? Incredible technology. Uh, what we've done in the last, what is it, Randy, like a year? Mm -hmm. um, we've just hardened the daylights out of that platform and we're investing very heavily in what it does and how it does it. And we are at the point now where we are actually releasing Idle as a service. Now this is for developers, it's for programmers out here, right? So if you've ever worked with indexes, right? And you've got a project where you say, okay, I just, I wish I could figure out, um, how to recognize a face in this picture? Or how do I analyze the concepts in this block of text? Um, how do I analyze the related concepts to a document that I have? So some of the very special things that Idle does are now available as a service layer. So to be, to be clear about what we're doing here, you submit your question and your content, you submit the query, we give you back the answer, okay? So you got a document, you want to know who the places, the people, the sentiment, the faces, 
in this document, you hand it to us, we give you back an answer. So I can do this in snackable bites. Right now. Like Wordle. Absolutely. <laughs> well, so, so it's like a, creating it's a, a tech it's a, cloud. It's a very different model from the <laughs> traditional autonomy model, right? Which was Sarge, you know, sell large, complex, on-premise, mm -hmm. you know, projects, right? We're basically taking that sophisticated technology and opening it up in the cloud of developers to let them go build any kind of app they want to. So, last time I talked to somebody, and it might have been Robert about this, yeah. I asked, so I'll ask you again, Brian, what did it take to get there? It's not like you just stuck a data center in front of no. Idle and put up a credit card machine. <laughs> what did you have to do to make this a service? It's not trivial, I presume. Yeah, well it's not trivial, but it is part of like, how do we host something where the entire world can hit it and ask questions of it, right? And so managing Idle, how you manage Idle and how you do that at scale is the problem that we had to solve. Um, as well as um, making it sort of usable from a developer framework, right? So anybody who's a developer that knows how to use it, knows how to get that, to make that easy and simple. So say a mobile app developer wants to do you know, a, 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 a facial recognition program, right? How do I do that or how do I make that possible? You can develop that in a day, good guys, bad guys. And I'll give you a great example of this. So we have been, in order to get this out there, we've been hosting hackathons. And the hackathon goes like this. You have two days, you get idle on demand, and what we do in, as a hosting service is we have some content sources. So we host an index of Wikipedia. And whatever you come with, whatever you come up with is cool. And here's the kinds of things people are doing with Idle On Demand uh, that we're hosting. Uh, the first one we came up with, somebody came up with an application that, believe it or not, plays Jeopardy. So, <laughs> in two days. I was going to ask you what you thought of Watson. In two right. days, okay. okay. Really? Well, this is my point. So the core <laughs> IP of what Idle does and understanding concepts and new, you can, anybody can use it now. So what they do is they take, Je Jeopardy has a feed, right? You can get the questions. Take the question off the Jeopardy feed, submit it over to Idle, wrap some pictures around it and things like that, all right? And 80% and, and of the time, Idle gets the answer right. Two days, play Jeopardy, all right? Another great one, somebody did a, we had a hackathon in San Francisco over the weekend. You should challenge IBM to a little. Uh, hey, I'll, I'll, little you head said on it not me, though. okay? I'm just, I'm just saying <laughs> that the power that this offers to the development community to be able to develop fast, rapid applications that understand human information is, is we think, game changing to the point where we're, we're just making it available free. The business model here is you use it, right? You, you want to play with Idle, here it is. The whole strategy right now, what Young John's is trying to do, sorry to interrupt, no, please. Is, is attract developers to, to this platform. So this was a conversation we had with, with Robert in Barcelona. And he, well, the thing I like about Robert, he's very straightforward about it. Right. So we, John Furrier and I, were, we weren't hammering him, but we were asking, what about the developers? That yeah. is such a key part of any software company. Said, exactly. You are absolutely right. It's a, it's, a, it's a gap for us right now, it's a white space and we have to yep. you know, address it. So what specifically, so you're giving us some examples here, what else have you done to address the developer world? Do you want to? Well, I think this is probably the most, I mean, Idle On Demand is our most important initiative around this because it takes our, our really our core asset, the, the crown jewels that have taken, that have either been, you have to jump over a cost barrier to get there. Right. And we're saying, look, you can use it. You can use it for free. So we have it's it's a true platform now that any any developer can use. weren't you guys at the we, uh, Worldwide Developer Conference? We were. What, so what kind so of just to was kind of see there? the trajectory, we really started first talking about it publicly with you mm -hmm. uh, and Robert in, in in Barcelona in December. Right. And so since then, we've basically been seeding the market. We've we've probably staged, you know, two dozen hackathons around the world. Um, and in fact, yeah, last week we were just at the Apple Worldwide Developer Conference. So what was and, that all uh, about? Just have a presence there? Or well, we actually, a party, uh, we did a little subversive thing. We did a party in a, in a speakeasy in San Francisco. <laughs> and uh, attracted- the hackers, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, yeah. so it was a party like in this, in this basement setting and we had all kinds of uh, awards and giveaways that would appeal to the developer community. <laughs> And we had a huge turnout. It was fantastic. We probably had 350 people there. The, the party, the whole you know. Did you have room to answer a Jeopardy question to get in? Or yeah. Well, no. Yeah. We made it. We made it uh, social. Uh, we made it a social media enabled kind of contest. So, you know, they basically had to take selfies of themselves with uh, the Idle On Demand logo, and then answer certain questions about the platform. And then every 30 minutes, we would announce a winner over social, and then they would come up to the DJ and get the prize and things. So it was it was fantastic. Yeah. We had great conversations with loads of developers that night, and a lot of them then came to the hackathon that yeah. we hosted over the weekend. Um, and so it's just an ongoing process. So the, the, the great thing about talking to developers is they, they want to get stuff done, 
Right. Right. And so the kinds of things that Idle On Demand will let you do is sort of common things like text extraction, right? So we own KeyView, right? KeyView is an asset that we own. We sell it with all of our software, but now, hey, I want you to tell me the main ideas that are in this document. I want you to extract all the text for me. I want you to give me the sentiment of this. That's an API call, and it's free. All right. I want you to tell me the quadrant that the face that's Randy Karens lives in in this photo. Give it to me. All right. So facial recognition now becomes an on-demand. Right. No charge. No setup. No nothing. Just use idle. So you got a couple of. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, more to your your question around what else are we doing for developers? Mm -hmm. Another very important component of this is working with partners. Yeah. So as part of the Haven platform, idle on demand is part of that overall Haven offering. Right. And so we, we definitely have done a lot to you know, educate and kind of evangelize this, these capabilities to our partners and many of them are now building their own apps off the idle on demand API. And you got the, the HP software has, uh, you know, Vertica specifically has the, the user conference coming up in uh, August. Right. Will that, will you start to attract developers then or is that more user conference? No, we will absolutely start Okay, so you bring absolutely. developers into that as right. well. That's absolutely. a good opportunity yeah. absolutely. to grow so that th Think about it from a, from a Haven standpoint. I often get asked, well, how do Autonomy and Vertica work together and how do I get started? And you heard that we're hosting you know, Haven as a service. Mm -hmm. And what this enables us to do is just hit idle and use it, right, with the data, bring it back, do what I want with it as part of a rapid application development. Whereas previously, you'd have to figure out how to stand up the servers, load the content, you know, do you want Wikipedia? Someone's got to index Wikipedia for right. you, right? We do that, so eventually what we, we see happening is people will put more and more of their own data. Like, I can feed you lots of my documents and say, now I'm going to give you another one, find similar concepts. So it allows you to get right to that idle value very quickly with very low barrier to entry. And well, the, the Vertica guys love it because now we can rapidly develop with Vertica. Well, Hadoop autonomy and Vertica, to me, it makes a lot of sense because people want insights. You know? right. They don't want to just do Hadoop. Yep. You know, right. It's the doing, but they want insight. The other piece of the survey was people aren't really getting enough value. A big chunk are, yep. but a big fat middle that aren't getting enough value out of their big data initiatives because they're not being able to extract those insights because they're having to try to invent stuff like autonomy and yeah. idle on their own. Right. And we, we recognize it's going to be an ecosystem of different players who are working together to, to, to make that happen. I mean, so like we had MapR and Hortonworks are here this week, right. you know, having good meetings with both of them. There's a lot of initiatives with, with Cloudera as well and a lot of the Hadoop community. We, we know we need to work with them. Yeah. To, Another uh, fit, I think, so we had Chris Sellen on earlier and he was saying, hey, our, our philosophy is keep everything. You right. Know, don't throw away data. So don't say that to a, the, the, the legal CIO at the <laughs> pharmaceutical company. Yeah. Because they don't want to keep working process. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where you guys come in. Right, you can exactly. help me defensively delete exactly. data that I don't want to keep. Right. You know, that I don't well, want to keep. Well, it's also around categorization, too. Like yeah, the, absolutely. The part of the intelligence is, is it something I should or shouldn't keep, right? And uh, for example, one of the hackathons, somebody did a quick application which will analyze a video, right? You take a video document, or like a YouTube video, for example and it will analyze the scenes that it'll OCR, so you want to, you want to send me a, a, a piece of video content, I'll OCR and give you back the output. And it will then analyze that as to whether it's suitable to watch for your kids. Yeah, <laughs> so okay. it's kind of like a real-time video analysis for, um, you know, for parental controls. Like, so, is, the, is this the kind of thing you should or shouldn't be showing? So, so I really can, can auto-categorize, basically, content at the point of creation or use Right. Is that right? And, and fundamentally, that's what it does, because you're looking at you know, probability modeling and matching, right? And so we can notice that this document, this idea is similar to these other ones, so I can go get similar concepts. It can, can, it can form an index or a mapping of, of like ideas and concepts. And you, can, you can't do that manually, right? The only way you can right. scale is to do it. All right, we got to leave it there. Yeah. I'm getting the hook. But uh, <laughs> gentlemen, thank you so much. Yes. Great yeah. segment. Appreciate you guys coming absolutely. on. Absolutely. Hey, Always, see you David. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, take care. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We're back with our next guest right after this.